The Fitness Gram Pacer Test is a multi-stage aerobic capacity test that progressively gets more difficult as it continues. Hey friends, nice shot. Please listen up. Today we're going to be doing our pacer test. Everybody say yes. yes. Can anybody raise their hand and tell me why are we doing this pacer test? If you know the pacer test intro by heart, then you are in the right place. Uh, today I wanted to give you a quick look into how I explain the pacer test and give you just a few ideas um, about the pacer test. When you're doing fitness testing, one important thing is please make sure that you're not doing it for a grade. Um, we shouldn't be grading our students on their fitness scores. I will link a few reasons why in the notes if you are curious. Um, but a few ways that you can make fitness gram fun, I have already covered in a blog post. You can check those out in the links below as well. Um, I think presentation and how you sell it has a big part in your kids' motivation to do uh, the pacer test and the curl up test and push up test. Um, especially for those kids that know that they are not gonna be in the top of the class, you still want them to do their best so that they can learn to set goals and try to improve themselves, become a better version of themselves. So the more that uh, you can encourage kids to do that and the more you can encourage kids for their own personal improvements, uh, the more wins I think you're gonna have with fitness gram and fitness testing. There are a lot of opinions and a lot of ideas out there um, that are really great ideas. I'll try to link a few of those below in the description if you're interested. Um, a few ones that I have done in the past are doing a partner pacer as just a warm up type thing so that kids can hear the CD more. And the more they hear it, the more familiar they'll be with it and the better they're gonna do on the test. And the way that works is you can do either 15 meter, 20 meter, however big of a space you have. Um, but you have a partner for the pacer and so one person goes and does a lap, comes back, tags the person's hand, and then the next person goes, so they're trading off. So you're not getting as tired, you're able to run more laps, and then you also have that teamwork aspect of, you know, if one person might be able to run 60 and one person can only run 30, well that person that can run 60, they can take two turns in a row and give their partner a break. So it's cool watching the kids and the dynamic when you do that partner pacer of, of seeing which kids are able to say, hey, I'll run two more for you, like take a break. And talking about that teamwork aspect of it beforehand um, is important. You also, if you have a lot of kids in a big space, you might wanna try a uh, trio pacer where you have one kid on one end of the gym and two kids on the other. And so then on the, on the line that has two kids, that's the starting line. So when the CD starts, one of those kids will run down, tag the next person across from them. That person will run down, tag, and then they're doing a, a triple tag situation. So you're not running as much, but you are running more often uh, than the partner. But instead of doing down and back, you're only going across one way. So if you have a lot of kids, you might wanna try that. Just to give those kids a chance to see the pace, to hear the CD, to get used to the beeps. Um, also do a modified pacer with kindergarten and first grade. If you're interested in that, I'll link a video down below for that one. Um, basically, I just run sideline to sideline, so it's much, much shorter and we only do 25 to 30 laps um, just for the kids to be able to hear it and I kind of sell it as a video game to see if they can make it to 30 points or 25 points or however many points you want to go. Those are just some ideas. If you want to see how I explain the pacer, I'm going to uh, clip a video in after this gets done and you can see the way I uh, explain the pacer at the beginning of the year. Hope you guys have a great day, have fun, and teach on. Later. Why are we doing this pacer test, Monica? Yes, it's a way for you to check your level of fitness and then a way for you to set some goals for yourself. And then at the end of the year, when you do the test again, you'll be able to see if you improve. So it's a way for you to track your progress. It's just information that you can use to become a better version of yourself. Can anybody tell me what is this test going to tell you? When you get your score, what is that telling you about your body? What is the pacer test testing? Is it testing your arm strength? No. Is it testing your leg strength? Yes. yes. No. Marklin? It's testing how you can pace your body. It's testing how you pace your body. So that is a big part of it, learning to pace yourself and not run as fast as you can. Vaughn? Uh, is it, it's for your lungs because when you run, you breathe and breathe and breathe. You are correct. It is partly your lungs and it's a one other part of your body. It's your lungs and your heart. Your heart. Okay?
It's called a cardiovascular test. Cardio is your heart and vascular is your lungs. Your lungs and your heart is the engine inside your body that helps your body move. So when you get done with this pacer test, I want you to listen to your body and you should be able to feel two things happening in your body. You should be able to hear your heart and feel your heart beat very fast inside your chest because you should be going as long as you can until you make two mistakes. You should also be able to hear yourself and it should sound like this. And that's your lungs. Your lungs are going to be working very hard to bring something into your body. Does anybody know what your lungs are bringing into your body? Gabby? You got it. Nice job, Gabby. Oxygen. Your lungs are bringing the oxygen in and then they put that into your blood and then your heart does the hard work of pumping that blood through your body. That's what helps your body move. So the stronger your lungs and your heart are, the faster you're going to be able to run and the longer you'll be able to run. So it's called an endurance test. It means how long can you go? It doesn't matter who gets there first. It's not a race. It's the pacer test, not the racer test. Okay? So let me tell you how the test works. If you are on the black line right now, you're going to be uh, taking the test first. If you're on the wall, you're going to be counting first. All right? The reason I'm giving you a counter is because I know when you are taking that test, you're going to be going so hard, you might forget your score. If you do forget your score, please point to the person you can ask if you forget. If you forget your score, please point to the person you're going to ask if you forget. If you forget your score, please point to the person that you're going to ask if you forget. Davi, who are you going to ask if you forget your score? So point to him. Okay. Now, when the test starts, <laughs> you are going to wait until it says start, and then the people on the line, you're going to be jogging all the way down to the walking line, way down at the other side of the gym. When you get down to the walking line, you need to wait until you hear the beep. It's going to sound like this. Beep. One. And then you'll be jogging back down to this line. When you get here, you're going to wait until you hear the beep. Two. Then you'll be going back down to that line. When you get down there, you wait for the beat each time. Now, sometimes, if you last long enough, you will hear a triple beat. It's a different sound. And it will say, end of level one. That's going to happen for the first time on number seven. Okay, so on number seven, you're going to hear a triple beat. It's going to be the end of level one. That means that you're going to get a little bit faster when you get to level two. It gets a little bit faster each time. Okay? Now, if you do not make it to the black line, that is called a mistake. So as the test goes on and it gets faster, you start to get tired, you will get down and you won't be able to make it one time. And it says, beep, six. If I don't make it to the line, that's my first mistake. First of all, if you're a counter, please hold up a one. That's going to let your partner know they have one mistake. So you need to be watching them to see if they make it to the line before the beep. If they do not touch the line before the beep, just hold up a one. How many mistakes can you have? You can have two mistakes. After two mistakes, your test is over. But on your first mistake, you get to keep going. So on your first mistake, you're going to turn around and just keep on trucking. So you do not have to touch the line. If you don't make it the first time, you just turn around. Try to make it back to the line before everybody else gets there and before the beat. If you make it back before the beat, then you are back in the test. You continue. Make sense? Now, let's say that I've already got my one mistake. I'm tr trying to come back to the line, but I did not make it. That would be my second mistake. So I'm coming back to the line. I don't make it. Beep. Ten. Did I make it to the line? No. Can anybody raise their hand and tell me what my score is? Aubrey. Um, nine. Why is it nine? Because you made the mistake on ten. I made the mistake on ten. I did not make it to the line. So if I did not complete that tenth lap, I don't get credit for it. I made my second mistake, and then I did not make it to the line on 10. So, if you make it to the line, and then it beeps, and you had to stop because you were so tired, then you would get 10. But you did not make it to the line, so after two mistakes, your test was over, and you had nine. Does that make sense? Yes. So, if you're a counter, you need to be watching to see if they make that last lap or not. If they don't make it, then they do not get credit for that last one. Now, this is very important. This is what you need to do when you finish. The first thing you need to do is check with your counter and make sure you know your score. After you get done, please don't lay down on the ground and stop moving because that is not good for your body. You need to cool your body down. So you're gonna walk around the outside of the gym two times. Please walk close to the wall, not on the black line, so that people can keep taking the test. You can get some water, you can go to the bathroom. I will be over there on that side of the gym. I'm gonna to try to write your scores down as you finish, but there are a lot of people in here, so please check with me and make sure that I have your score. After you walk two laps, get some water, go to the bathroom if you need to, then you can sit down next to your partner. 
But when there's only a few people left, please don't yell and scream and try to cheer them on because they will not be able to hear the beeps. So even though you're trying to help them, sometimes it can make it hard for them to hear and they won't know when to go. So if you want to cheer for them, please do a silent cheer. Everybody show me what a silent cheer looks like. There you go. Any questions about how to do the pacer test? Yes, sir. Everybody say, do your best. Do your best. Forget the rest. Forget the rest. you got questions. Does everybody understand what you're about to do? Okay. Now, do it as many as you can, but remember, friends, it's not a race. You do your personal best because what you're going to do is you're going to take this test now, and then at the end of the year, you're going to try to improve your score. So if you get 10 today, you can set a goal for yourself, and at the end of the year, you can try to get 15 or maybe even 18. Try to get more.